Hello and welcome to the Baker and the Banker podcast. I'm Jenny Keller of Jenny Cookies and this is my mortgage guy, Dan. Oh yeah, we're going to go on a ride today and this one's going to be fun. Okay, it's going to be a good one. I can't wait. (laughs) I tried to base a lot of these topics and themes of this podcast around questions you guys have sent in on social media. Mm -hmm. And one question I get over and over and over and over and over is always pertaining to our love for Disneyland (laughs) and tips and tricks and where we stay and what we eat and the best way to do Disney. So it's a little bit of a deviation from some of the topics we've had in the past, but this is a fun one. Buckle up. Front row, we don't go. We're talking about Disneyland today. What does that come from though? Why don't you start with that? Where did, where, I've heard you say that. The Incredicoaster, Uh, my favorite ride at California Adventure. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. It's also a big, debate between people too because they think the back row is better like you get more speed in the back i love the front because i'm i mean you see everything there's nobody in front of you the wind is just pounding in your face so much that your eyes are usually watering you're screaming my hands are in the air and then you go under this tunnel and you get to the top and you'll see him say cookies and it smells like cookies it's it's literally my ride so what are people (laughs) saying that the back of the roller coaster offers compared to the front faster it's like there's faster. more so I don't you're know. whipped around in the back I think, maybe yeah. versus you catching the the head of everything in the front i am also extremely phobic of throw oh, up oh god and it. so i strategically think oh, about these things okay. when i go on rides <laughs> i so but i love the front i love the front so let's talk disney we love it it's close we live in the pacific northwest so a flight to orange <laughs> county is yeah. only a couple of hours I started going to Disney when I was, I can't even remember the first time I was a kid. My family um, grew up in California and my grandparents used to live there. So my mom would drive us in the car down to Southern California. We'd stay at like my great grandma's house or my, my mom's aunt's house. And we would pack our lunch and we would do Disney all day long. And I loved it. It's just that part of my memory. I met Dan and he had never been to Disneyland. I'm like, what? Who are you? How could how could you have never been to Disneyland? And we didn't go all those years we were married. I don't think we went until the kids were maybe, gosh, Allie probably had to be like four. But I was so excited to have kids and take my kids to Disneyland. So before I even took you, yeah. or we went as a family, yeah. I took Allie when she was like six months old. My mom and I flew down and we carried her around Disneyland. And then I think we finally went together as a family. So that first time, let me just tell everybody about Dan's first experience with the happiest place on earth. He'd never been. Yeah. I'm so excited. I, my mom is with us. It's a family affair. We booked the 8 a.m. flight because we were go big or go home. If you know my mom, that she is like Speedy Gonzalez. She's always moving. She works harder than anybody in the world and she's on a mission. So we get everybody on this airplane. We probably left our house in Lake Stevens at 6 a.m. to get to an 8 a.m. flight. We get to Disneyland at 10 a.m. Where do we go? Straight to the hotel. (laughs) (laughs) No, not just straight to the hotel. Yeah, straight to change and go to to Disneyland. Straight to change at the hotel because we couldn't check in at the hotel because it was only 10. They put us in their back room where there was no will call, just in the back room, you could let your luggage stay there. So <laughs> I changed because it was a lot hotter, yeah. warmer than I thought, than I had planned. So I changed into my flip flops and shorts, which we'll get to this in a minute, but don't wear flip flops <laughs> if you're gonna do the Jenny Cookies, Kathy Thorns all day long. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, straight to- uh, So everybody gets changed. Allie's got her princess dress on. We're just booking it over to Disneyland. We've got places to go, food to eat, rides to get on. And Dan is on his phone. My mom is 200 yards in front of us. I think Hudson's probably in a stroller because I think he was only six months old. So the year is 2009 because my best man at my wedding, Ben White, was getting married. So remember, we went down and I was going to leave the next day because he was getting married in Southern Cal. Yep. So I had just started mortgage. So I was like one and a half years into mortgage. So yeah, I, I didn't have a team, so I was running everything. Yes. Phone is ringing. Um, Hudson had to be about six months to mm-hmm. eight months. And so in, yeah, in 2009, Allie would have been three. Yep. So yeah, a three-year-old and a less than one-year-old. Yep. So we get to Disneyland, Dan's on his phone. We're, we get in a line <laughs> and I'm so happy. The second I get through those gates and I see that Mickey Mouse flower bed, yeah. I'm just like a whole new girl. 
And Dan is like still on the phone. And I'm like, pay attention. Like here at Disneyland, like you take your first photo right here. We're going to go through. We're going to pick out our ears. What ride do we want to go on? And. But let me preface it this first. Okay. We waited in line for almost an hour just to get in the gate. <laughs> so it was just bad timing. Doesn't even matter. You're just whatever. like in okay. the presence. Yeah. So Dan's now in a bad mood. And I'm like. <laughs> You can't be in a bad mood. We're at Disneyland. It's the happiest place on earth. We haven't eaten yet. I quickly realized <laughs> I was wrong. I thought Dan would love Disneyland, but clearly this is not where he grew up. This is not nostalgic to him. He does not have fond memories here. Dan likes to work. He counts every single minute of every day to be productive. And now we're waiting in line two hours for a, what, three-minute ride? Yeah, there's nothing productive about that. So... <laughs> <laughs> Going into our first experience was not the happiest. You kind of did turn it around a little bit, but I was like, okay, I was wrong. I, this is not your happiest place I turned place it around for you and for my kids because it was, it was Disneyland, but I was like not feeling it. Not <laughs> to mention, though, I love your mom and you know this, but Kathy is like go extra hard or go home. So we literally went... What, 11 o'clock? We would do 12 hours. We went, we shut down the park at midnight. <laughs> I can't walk. I got blisters. And, oh, by the way, we got to do this again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I don't know when you decided to change your tune. It probably was when, like, maybe our kids got older and they loved all the Disney movies. Or, I mean, Allie became Cinderella obsessed. And I think you get so excited to see yeah. your kids be yeah. excited about something because we did end up booking a five day trip where more than five yeah. days. I bought a five day pass. We brought Allie and Hudson. They were yeah. a little bit older and we did Disney pretty hard on, <laughs> on we, that trip as well. But you're smart. No, we did it again and we did it as a family. So mm -hmm. there wasn't a bunch of, I mean, the first time, you know, your mom and Susan, I mean, there was a lot of people there, yeah. right? Your uncle down there was there. Every, everyone joined us there. Yeah. This time it was just our family and, uh, we took it at a little slower pace mm -hmm. and it was fun. And I loved it because Hudson just went nuts, running around like we were trying to keep him. But Allie, little Cinder Alley, yep. you know, and then she went to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo Boutique. Is yep. that right? Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Boutique, yeah. yeah. And then that yeah. was fun. So all that to say, Dan's first trip was not magical. But now we often call him Disney Dan because he <laughs> turns into a different person when he gets to Disneyland and he's got a churro in his hand. So, and I only am on my phone. When you we're, are if really we're in not line. on your phone. You Only love if we're it in there. Line. Only if we're waiting in line. So one of the most popular questions I get is where do you stay? So that very first time we stayed, I want to say it was called like Portofino or something. I okay. No offense. Don't really recommend it. Wasn't that great. <laughs> okay. We moved on from there to stay at the World Mark. It was more of like a timeshare type thing yeah. that you could rent. That was really nice with young kids because there's a washer and dryer and there's a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so fun. you could bring your snacks. And like, I remember doing like instant oatmeal and things for the kids in the morning. So you weren't having to buy all sure. the food in the park all yeah. day long. But you did. And we walked. We walked. And they had yeah. a really big pool. So the World Mark. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah. And then one year I took Allie just myself for Halloween and we stayed at the Hyatt Regency and mm -hmm. I have stayed at the Hyatt Regency so many times. I love, I love that one. Yeah. It's clean. There's a Starbucks in the lobby so you can get your coffee or your breakfast sandwiches. They have a little shuttle that you can take over to the parks for a pretty inexpensive or you can just do an Uber. And they also have big like kid suites. So remember we've done the rooms yep. where they have like the bunk beds yep. and it's kind of separate. I've done it with like my girlfriends and my mom. We went a few years ago and we each had rooms and then there was kind of like a center room. And it's, I thought it was really affordable. I know prices fluctuate quite a bit. And then we always have had friends say like, you guys love Disney so much. How have you not stayed at the Grand? And I'm like, well, because like you're not even in your room. Why would you pay that much to stay there? Well, Why would you, Jenny? Well, <laughs> we splurged and stayed at the Grand a few years ago, and we are now ruined yeah. because you walk right into the park. It's super convenient. And then we have older kids now, right? So when we go as a family, like, we can split up. Like, we can go back and have a date night, and the kids can stay and hang out at the pool or go to California Adventure or, you know, and it's not like you go to Disneyland to split up, but it's super convenient. You're oh, right. yeah. yeah. It's so nice. It's expensive. Um, it's something that we save up for, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of one of those reasons why we work really hard. You know, you always say that about certain things. Like, this is a motivation when I – I'm doing things I don't want to do. It's like, so yeah. that that's something we can splurge on when we yep. do take a family yep. trip. I've also stayed at the Disneyland hotel and that one's really adorable as well. So no matter where you stay, 
you're going to get to the park. But before we get there, okay. you said, what's one thing that you do not want to wear? You want to wear, you, you don't want to wear flip-flops. You want to wear yeah. comfortable shoes. Comfortable shoes, yeah. number one. Don't try to wear a brand new pair of shoes. Definitely wear shoes that you've broken in. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to pack two pairs of shoes, it's kind of nice because then if, say, you do get that blister, you can move into the other shoe. Um, one time you and I went for a date out of state. It was really hot. It was really crowded. And it was when like skinny jeans were really popular and mine were like tight. Uh -oh. And I remember, <laughs> I remember being so uncomfortable and hot and sticky and just yuck with tight clothes on. So you'll often see me in Disneyland in overalls because they're loose. There's lots of pockets. Think through what you're going to wear, yeah. wear layers. There's lockers at the front of Disneyland and California Adventures so that you can throw a coat or a sweatshirt or whatever merchandise you've purchased throughout the day. You could just go back and forth to your lockers. So you're not like lugging that all around. Um, another thing I love to purchase if you don't own one already, is a fuel rod. They're these little portable chargers. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you are on your phone, you're taking pictures, you're taking video, your battery is going to run low. Yeah, It's nice to have that fuel rod and you can share it. And I think they're only like maybe $30, but you go to different areas in the park and you just put the old one in and they give you a fresh one. You so go. you and I have both been able to use that. Yeah. Well, one of the things that really bugs me, cause I'm really, uh, I have a penny pincher. And I had to really get used to this, but every time we go to Disneyland, you buy those stupid ears, and they're expensive. They are really so speaking expensive. Speaking of attire and what to wear, uh, pack your ears. Pack, pack your, your ears. ears. Yeah. Plus, I feel like some of the new designs are like kind of crazy, yeah. and I'm kind of classic. I think like yeah. my style, and so I have the same ears, like black ears. I have rose gold ears. You do have a lot of ears, though. I do, but. I have realized, like, even though I do love to buy a new pair, there hasn't been that many great pairs. Um, if you have, say you have a whole bunch of kids or a huge family, like, you can't afford to buy everybody a $30 or $40 pair of ears. So a great place to buy them is Amazon. Okay. You can buy your stuff ahead of time. Um, other A few other things I love on Amazon for Disney are um, the little Disney fans because it's hot. You can buy a little selfie light because it gets dark at the park and you want to keep taking your photos, right? So there's this little Minnie Mouse or Mickey Mouse selfie light you can put on your phone. Um, I have a pretty big aversion to heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I bought a Disney cooling towel. One of the times it was so hot, I just wanted to melt. And you can buy those on Amazon too. So you don't have to buy that super expensive one, but they're really nice to have because you can get them wet. You put them on your neck and you do stay a little bit cooler. You can also buy all your Disney merch not at the park. You can buy a t-shirt yeah. at Target. Yeah. You know, you could buy the 400% markup. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us about some things that you may not know about. Okay. So one of my favorite little things at Disneyland is something mm -hmm. called the baby care center. Mm -hmm. And I was telling this customer a couple weeks ago, she was going to Disneyland and she had all these kids and a, and a brand new baby. And I'm like, do you know about the baby care center? So if you don't know, it's at the end of Main Street, off to the right, right across from the Little Red Wagon, which is where you get the best corn dogs. And inside you'll find high chairs and little cribs and tiny toilets for little kids and just like a great and lovely people that work there, cast members. And it's such a great place for moms or parents to go with babies or little kids to just take that break from the park, feed their baby in a high chair, change their diaper, have a minute and not have to do that in a public restroom. Mm -hmm. I love the baby care center. And when I said that to one of uh, our customers at the bake shop, one of my employees was like, wait a minute, what? I didn't know about that because she had just gotten back from Disney uh, and they had a baby. So cute little side note, even if you don't have babies, go in and look at it. It's really cute and it still remained the same. It looks the same as when they did Disney. And then right across from there, have I ever taken you to the first aid? <laughs> Have you ever had to go for a band-aid? Luckily, band -aid? we've not had to. Oh, I've like been- you went there before to get aspirin or something for Hudson or a band-aid for Hudson. Yes. So I have had the blisters at okay. Disneyland. And so right next to Baby Care Center is the first aid. And they have everything you could ever need. They yeah. have and Tylenol, oh, wow. ibuprofen, band-aids, allergy pills. You name it, they have it. And you go in, you ask them, you know, for what they have. And then you just write it in a little log and then they get you on their way. Oh. It's oh, cool. so nice. You don't even have to leave. I added this one in to my notes here. The Disney lost and found. We How, have used that. I know. Yeah. Remember the time when you took my Ray-Bans, we yep. were on the Matterhorn, Matterhorn yep. and they flew off. Oh yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding? Those are my sunglasses and you were wearing them and now they're at the bottom of the Matterhorn. Well, we asked the cast members, mm -hmm. like 
what do you guys do? Will I ever get these back? You know, things have flown off. All the ears, all the sunglasses and oh, yeah. hats. And they said, check lost and found at the end of the day because we do a sweep at the bottom of the Matterhorn every night. Every night. And we take them to lost and found. Craziest story ever. I had a friend that was that, that we ran into. It wasn't even like really, I didn't even know she was going to be there. So not like a super close friend. And I'm like, Rachel, would you go to lost and found and see if they have my sunglasses? I sent her a picture of them. No joke. She found the sunglasses and I think she mailed them back to me because we funny. both lived in Washington, but yeah. not near each other. Insane. So don't fret if you lose something because you might be able to find it at Lost and Found. Love it. The next thing on my list is em the embroidery that they offer. And this is something I shared recently when you and I went just a couple weeks ago. A lot of people did not know this when I shared this, but you know you can get your Mickey ears with a little felt hat like the Mous Mouseketeers and you get your name on the back. I mean, I've done it for Allie and Hudson when they were little. But you can also get some of your merchandise embroidered. So you, they have this available in Disneyland and Disneyland Adventure. It's really affordable. It's $7.99. And you, you have to put your name. There are mm -hmm. restrictions. Like I couldn't put cookies. I could only put Jenny on it. But you can embroider your, your sweatshirt or your okay. coat or your hat. I think that's really fun. The next thing is something I've always wanted to do, and that's to visit Walt's apartment. Ooh. Okay. So it's kind of a bucket list thing. You get to go on a VIP tour. Do you know where Walt's apartment is? I think it's right when you walk in the main area, right? Yeah, it's right Off above the, the fire back. station. Yeah. And there's a little lamp there, and they yeah. always leave it on. And you get to go look at his apartment. He built that so that he would have a place to go after being at the park all day. It's, it's super cute. And then there's also the VIP tour. So this is like the the mega experience. So if you yeah. only have a limited amount of time at Disney, you live super far away, you're going with a big group, it's expensive. It's a huge splurge. But what the VIP tour is, is you get to go around with a cast member. A lot of Disney people call them the plaids because they're in the plaid vest. Okay. And they take you to the front of the rides. They get you front seat at the parades. Um, they get your food orders in. It's really nice to go with the VIP tours. We went. What'd you think? We did go. We did. Did we do that during COVID? Yes. I think it was. Yeah. We were in COVID and we got to do that. We were in COVID and we got to fly through there. Yeah. It was good. It was really good. Yeah. It was an experience. It's it's an experience. He doesn't love Disney you as much as I do. fly through it. <laughs> I, I do love that. I couldn't believe it when we got to go with the yeah, VIP. There's no lines. And they take you through these back entrances. Yeah. Not like the normal front. And next thing you know, boom, they're letting you in on, the, on a ride. So yeah, it is definitely an experience. One question we have received... <clears throat> over and over and over and over is how did you guys get into club 33? So if you don't know what club 33 is, it is, it's a speakeasy at Disneyland. So it's just a door with a little doorbell that has mm -hmm. a 33 on it. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can eat at this restaurant is if you're either a club 33 member or if you have a reservation made for you by a member. A member. Yeah. And that's been like bucket list for me forever. I will never forget the time you took me down and surprised me with that mem that that reservation. We didn't know it was going to happen. And well, I knew it was going to happen. No, but we didn't know for sure because remember we had to go buy clothes? I knew. Oh, you did know. Oh, I just got to go on a shopping spree first. Mm -hmm. You got surprised. <laughs> well, we were at we were doing a date out of state and he was like, "Oh my gosh, we have reservations at 6 or 7 or whatever time it was." And there's a dress code there. You can't have like rips, rips. in your jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you couldn't have open toe shoes. And I must have had rips in my jeans and sandals that or something. Was the style back then. And Burks and I got to go jeans. to that cute little surf store in downtown yeah. Disney and pick out new clothes. And we got to go to Club 33 yeah, you for dinner. Yeah, a cute sundress. And then I had to pick out some. Yep, I had to change my pants too because you couldn't have rips. Yeah. And get some shoes. But that was. Uh, Really yes. fun. So you you it, to become a member, it's ridiculously expensive. So you get messages all the time. Are you guys Club Thirty Three yeah, members? No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> I have a really great client of mine who uh, uh, has a client of his who's very 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 wealthy, and he's a member, and he just does me a favor every once in a while because he knows how much it means to you. So it's I feel it's super a, fortunate that it's we've a great been able experience. to go there. It's a wonderful experience. Um, and I would have never known about it, that it was that important to you had you not shared that. And I didn't even know. We'd gone to Disneyland a, a, new, a few times, numerous times. And then you brought it up one day. And, yeah. And uh, One go. time I got extra lucky because you set that up for my friends and I. So mm -hmm. I got to go to my friends. I took one and for the team. I don't know if you know this, but they made the reservation and the, 
the person we know that made the reservation for us made it for the wrong day. And oh. we were like devastated. We were like, we're not going to be there that day. And they felt bad because it was the error on their end, which they didn't have anything to be bad or mm -hmm. feel bad for because they were doing us a favor. But they went over the top and they booked us the VIP tour. So we got to go with the plaid all day long. And then at the very end, they somehow got us into another oh, no reservation way. on top of this incredible day, like literally the most magical yeah. day. We get to the dinner at Club 33 and we have this table next to us. Mind you, in Club 33, there's only like, would you say 20 tables Maybe in there? if that. It's very yeah. small inside. Mm -hmm. And the table next to us is being... I think they maybe had a little bit too much to drink and they were being really obnoxious yeah. and inappropriate. We didn't care. We were having the time of our life that day and just so grateful to be at Club 33. But Disney wanted us to make sure our trip was, you know, a great magical experience. Yeah. And they invited us to, into the members, members only members. lounge. Wow. Yeah, for dessert. They were like, we're so sorry about this, you know, table next to yeah. you. Do you guys want to go over there? So we got to do that. So I feel really, really fortunate for seeing all that. But it doesn't make Disney any less for me. I would be just as happy going to probably your favorite restaurant at Disney, which is almost right downstairs yes. from there. It's called the Blue Bayou. Love it. And as a kid, I used to always go on Pirates of the Caribbean with my grandma. She'd always tell me, like, your grandpa worked on this ride when it was being built. And you get on that boat and you see the little restaurant off to the right. Yeah. I never realized you could eat there. I think probably because we like packed a lunch as kids, you know, we didn't really eat at Disneyland. Yeah. It was too expensive. And so when I, we did that five day trip with the kids, I researched that and made us reservations to eat there. Do this. This is really yeah. cool. If you're going to save up for your Disney trip and really want to have an experience, it's nice to be able to sit down and have a meal, take a little break. You love it. You have to get the Monte Cristo sandwich. It's oh amazing. Gosh. Yeah, but it's great. It's rich. Yeah, it's rich. Save yourself for lunch Save if yourself. you're going to eat that or share yeah. it with a and friend. And you get to watch the people, you know, float by you on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. It's really fun. Oh my That's gosh. my favorite. It's it's pretty cute. The other place we love to eat is a little Mexican restaurant right outside of... Your favorite ride. Thunder Mountain. Yeah. Really good Mexican food. Mm -hmm. Across from there, we love Golden Horseshoe for their chicken fingers and corn dogs. And then... Probably my favorite yeah. in the whole park, and it's not really a restaurant, but it's a place to go in and get food and there's seating and tables, is the Jolly Holiday Cafe. Yeah. They have the best tomato soup and grilled cheese. I mean, I like to go to Disney when it's not hot because I don't like to be hot. So it's cold usually when we go, and it's so good, that tomato soup and, well, and the grilled cheese. Well, since you're talking about food now, then why don't Kay. you tell everyone Talk what food. your favorite, because you get this asked all the time. What's your favorite? favorite food if like you could eat one thing at disneyland what would it be oh man okay so we're going food not dessert food or dessert no i think it has to be separate because i have two favorites okay food then dessert well up until recently my like ride or die was the corn dog mm -hmm. always like i couldn't wait to get to disneyland get to that little red wagon and get my corn dog now i think i don't know is it because i'm getting old like it just doesn't sit right with me anymore i've learned that you should only have a few bites of the corn dog yeah it's just, it's so good though, you guys. Definitely get one, share it as a family okay. or with your spouse or whoever you're with. I love the Ronto wrap. And this is a new addition because it's in Galaxy's yeah, Edge, which is like Star it. Wars yeah, land. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's but in it, like this pita bread. It has all this like does cabbage hot dog type though? stuff. There's like some kind of a hot dog yeah. inside. I love hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson and I love the Ronto wrap. He's okay. going in a couple of weeks and he cannot wait to get the Ronto wrap. Oh, yeah. It's okay. so good. What about dessert? Well, I got to tell you a few more of their good food things because sometimes you eat so much junk all day long that you kind of even like need food. I'm trying to think what other food they have. I'll tell you. Of I'm going to remind you. Okay. Right across from Jungle Cruise, they have the meat yep. stores. Yeah. Those are oh, so yeah. good. It's just that little source of protein throughout mm -hmm. your day. It's important to mix some of that in, in between okay. all the junk. I also discovered in the last maybe year or two, um, there's a place, I can't think of what it's called, but it's on Main Street. It's right before you get to Jolly Holiday. That it's like a hot dog place. And remember I got the hot dog with mac and cheese on it? Yes. There's a picture of me sitting on the sidewalk. That. Yeah. At, it's probably the biggest smile I've ever had, eating that hot dog with macaroni and cheese yes. on it. Again, back to the hot dog. <laughs> you guys, I love hot dogs. Okay, desserts. Uh, I'm going to let you go first on the desserts because you love dessert. Well, I love 
a churro. I think I always get a churro there. I always get, because it's the end of the day and I'm tired and I'm hungry and it's hot. I always go to that little ice cream shop yes. because they dip their waffle cones in chocolate with sprinkles. Yeah. And then I get a cookie dough ice cream cone. But there's one thing that takes the cake on everything. And you turned me onto this and I don't know what it is about this. It's just the best. It's from the Jolly Holiday Cafe mm -hmm. and it's a morning meal you got to get it in the morning because they sell the out by like 10 or 11 out. or 12. Mm -hmm. um but it's the raspberry mac fresh raspberries it's huge macaron and it's shaped like mickey, well, Dis mickey yeah oh my gosh so and good i don't know what what would you say the feeling is the feeling like is like a, a rose rose it's not rose it's like a rose i don't know buttercream like oreo buttercream or something no okay. sometimes they have that during their different event okay um offerings okay. but there's fresh raspberries inside that's what it is it. the best mac you will ever have in your whole life so. you got to get there early or do a mobile order don't miss the mac don't miss the mac and it's refrigerated so it's cold mm. it is the best thing and i'll be really honest i'm kind of a dessert connoisseur i love to try everything at disneyland and i am often disappointed by a lot of their treats one of my b hacks one of the big goals big mm. hairy audacious goals talk to us speak it into hey. existence I would love nothing more than to help Disney dream up their desserts. Oh. I know they have to make a million yeah. desserts. It's hard to keep them all fresh, but I really feel like we could up the quality and the taste of these desserts because I want them to be so good and they're not. They, they're kind of dry. Yeah. There's a few things that are good, but oftentimes I'm, I'm just not impressed. Yeah. So, so far we've got the ice cream, the raspberry Mac. We've got Dan's favorite. He loves churros. Well, let's talk about Allie and Hudson's favorite. Hudson's favorite dessert there is what? It's, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this because I own a cookie store. He loves the Jack Jack cookie the Jack at the Jack. end of the Incredicoaster. What is a Jack Jack cookie? It's like a deep dish yeah. chocolate chip cookie. They heat it up. You get to eat it warm. He it's loves awesome. that. Allie, yeah. this is random. I know, and I right? actually never had this until she chose this one yeah. of the last times we were there. She wanted popcorn. Yep. I'm like, why would you get popcorn? The same way I kind of feel about the churros. Like, why yeah. would you get a churro? Because I feel like Costco churros are just as good and 90% of the yeah, less bigger. of the price. Yeah. Yeah. But the popcorn at Disneyland, they are pumping something magical into those. <laughs> it is so good. Extra salty. If you like popcorn, don't miss the popcorn. Okay, okay let's talk Disney tips. My friend Erica mm -hmm. is the Disney queen and she's all about the rope drop, which means you get there early and you, you get this time in the park when it's not very crowded, but that also means getting there super early. So know who you're with because rope drop would not be the way you and I would do Disneyland. We've been there. We don't need to be at rope drop. We don't need to go on 10 million rides. We're really happy to just be there. Take in the ambiance yeah. and the food and yep. go on a couple rides. So <laughs> it really depends on who you're with. Kind of know, know your crowd mm -hmm. because some people do go and they want to go on every single ride and that's totally fine. That's mm -hmm. why, what you paid for, right? But don't ruin the fun with your family or your friends by having this crazy goal of the day <laughs> because <laughs> you might, you might change the energy of the group pretty quick. Okay. Um, one thing you don't want to miss is, is the, the fireworks they're incredible yeah. there's nothing like a disney fireworks show yeah the music the fireworks it's what else magical. is happening around the fireworks they have like a par the parade and the music i and love everything. the What's disney that? parade and yeah. sometimes you have to get a seat early yeah. but if you're with a group or you have young kids it's a great excuse to just say i'm gonna grab the yeah. bench or the sidewalk for the family and sit and watch those parades it's it's good to take breaks i learned that later in life i would make my kids go pretty hard and they'd be like, we just want to go to the pool. I'm like, no, we have to see this and yeah. we have to see that. Um, when you get to Disney, if you don't already know this, there's a Disneyland app that you're going to want to download that shows you wait times. And there's also a little QR code that they scan for Disney photographers. And there's Disney photographers all around the park. And you just pull out your phone, they scan that QR code, and at the end of your trip, you could see all the photos that they took and have an opportunity to download all of those. I think it's really affordable for the memories that you're going yeah. to get. I love capturing that moment. Be sure that you're taking video of this. It's so sweet to remember all of those memories. Magic memories. Magic, magical memories. Um, this is not Disney related, but there's a company called flytographer.com and they hire professional photographers all around the world actually. Yeah. And you can travel or go to different cities or even you could do it in your hometown, I bet. Because yeah. I know that my friend Kelly is a, is a flytographer mm -hmm. and she does 
photographer shoots in Seattle all the time. But when our kids were little, we hired a photographer to do some family photos in Disneyland. Yeah, that was fun. And those are some of my favorite yeah. photos, like yeah. those little memories of the kids. And they had their little Mickey ice cream bars and churros. And they're so sweet. We've hired photographer in New York. We've yeah. hired photographer in Hawaii. Yeah. And this is a little... What's it called when you advertise? A little advertisement little here. Pitch. Ad break. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have a code with them. I want to say it's Jenny Cookies or Jenny Cookies 50. Okay. And it gets you $50 off. Oh, wow. Somebody asked me that recently on social and it did give them that off. So if it's not that, if that's not correct, email me and I'll, or message me and I'll give you the correct code. But Flytographer. Um, let's talk about Disney magic. I know we're almost done here, but the experience that you get at Disney yeah. is unlike anything else. And it's something that's inspired me and how I operate at my bake yeah. shop. I want my customers to have literally the same experience. I want yeah. it to be incredible. And Disney, <clears throat> it's kind of like a unspoken thing, like secret menu type thing, but Disney has something called magical moments. And yeah. it doesn't mean every cast member has to participate in this, but they have an opportunity to create magical moments for their guests all day, every day. And so for example, they could see a little kid drop their ice cream on the ground and a cast member can go up to them and give them a little card that says no strings attached. Mm -hmm. And they can mark on there whether that's for a free food or dessert, for a free merchandise, or to go to the front of a ride. Oh, cool. I love that about Disney. Magical moment. A magical yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, one of our friends recently was at Disneyland, and she bought the white Mickey sweatshirt that I just bought, the mm -hmm. one I got embroidered. Their whole family got one. And she was sharing this with me later. She said, we, we got those sweatshirts because I said, did you go get them embroidered, da, da, da. And she said, no, I, I went to pick up my food and like the cast member had kind of stacked the trays in a weird way, in some crazy way. And I guess like mustard or something got all over her brand new white sweatshirt. She ended up telling them and they gave her a brand new sweatshirt. So that's just the kind of stuff that Disney does all the time to make sure that everybody's leaving with a smile. Oh, cool. I yeah. love Disneyland. Well, it's so magical that Disney even has a business training workshop or course. Oh, yeah. You've even wanted to go to that. I do want to go to that. Yeah. And so it's how to create magical moments in your business, how to provide a wow experience yes. in your business. So, um, yeah, it's. I think I know I've seen you be so inspired by just our time spent there. Well, we have wanted to bring that back to this area, and that's why the bake shop has offered our magical days. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't really say it's Disney – and we've never like put our necessarily like character faces or things on yeah. cookies. You have to be really careful with that. But I think it's important to spread that magic, even when you get back from Disney. And yeah. there's a lot of people that, you know, you can't always jet off to Disneyland with a bunch of kids or with your work schedules or your yeah. life. So there's a company here locally called Enchanting Events, and they have characters that are based on, mm -hmm. you know, Disney characters. And they've come to the big shop. And if you're listening, you may have come to one of our Disney days. And I've encouraged my employees. We always do like a little team huddle before our Disney days. And I say, you guys can, can offer a magical moment, you know, yeah. whether that means pulling somebody out of the line to go meet a character, yeah. handing them an extra cookie. We've even, I've even given them the permission to like give out a sweatshirt, give out a cookbook. And it was really fun after the last one we did for my employees to be able to come to me and share the magical moment that they shared. And what's funny is Allie has done papers now at school. You know, she's in high school now. And I don't know if it was a business class or what it was, but she's like, mom, I got 110% on my yeah. report. And my teacher was so impressed because we were talking about business and really how to go that extra mile. And I told him about magic moments of the big shop. That's so funny. <laughs> so it was really cute. Well, but I mean, speaking of magical moments, so why don't we, as we wrap, talk about the challenge for the week okay. and involve a magical moment. I think the challenge this week is to create a magical moment in in somebody's life or around you. So a stranger, a family member, maybe give us an example, Dan. Well, you know, give you as an example. Didn't you during COVID or right around that time go do that at the bake shop? You went around the community to nurses and to teachers and to Hagen yeah. grocery stores. Oh, yeah. We handed out. We always give out <coughs> cookies. Yeah. But I think there's little like moments you can make in somebody's day. Yeah. Maybe they're not magical, right? It's just sure. that little random act of kindness. So this week, look for a way to lend or give a magical moment to somebody. Inspired by Disney. Inspired by Disney. <laughs> and Jenny Cookie's Bake Shop. Yeah. I love it. Obviously, we didn't answer every Disney question there ever was. Mm -hmm. We could talk about Disney all day long. 
I'm sure I forgot things. We really didn't even talk about rides. Um, but we're always here if you have questions. Take us home. Okay, guys. Thanks for listening. I can't wait for next week. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.